All right, today we're going to be looking at prime and composite numbers. Some of you I know are got to know, know these definitions already, and that's okay. We're just going to review it, but I want you to go ahead and copy these definitions down as well to bring in um, tomorrow for your math spiral. All right? So first of all, when we look, look at prime and composite numbers, we need to kind of review our divisibility rules. So remember we talked about 2, so if, if the number ends in an even number, it's divisible by 2, such as 1,354, because 4 is even, so the number is even. If the digit um, sum is divisible by 3, then the number is divisible by 3. So remember, if, it, if you can add up all of the digits in a number and it's divisible by 3, then it will be divisible by 3, such as 432,120. So 4 plus 3 is 7, 7 plus 2 is 9, 9 plus 1 is 10, 10 plus 2 is 12, plus 0 is 12, and then 1 plus 2 is 3, so the digital root is 3, so then 432,120 is divisible by 3. So 5, if the last digit is a 0 or a 5, then the number is divisible by 5, such as 654,765, ends in a 5, so it's divisible by 5. 6 is one of those with any number is divisible by 2, by that is even, I'm sorry, and is also divisible by 3, then it is divisible by 6. So remember, so if it's even, and then if you add the sum of the numbers and you get 3, 6, 9, then it is divisible by 6. But it's got to have both of those parts, remember. 9 is like 3, except for whenever you add the digital, get the digital root, the sum of the digits, it's got to be a 9. And if it's 9, then you know it's divisible by 9, such as 234,405. So 2 plus 3 is 5 plus 4 is 9, 9 plus 4 is 13, 13 plus 0 is still 13, plus 5 is 18, and then 1 plus 8 equals 9, so 234,405 is divisible by 9. All right, 10, any number ending in a 0 is divisible by 10, which is 123,340 ends in a 0, so it's divisible by 10. All right, with that said, kind of reviewing those, it helps to make you understand the difference between a prime and a composite number. So the first one's prime number. So prime numbers are values that can only be factored into one in itself. Okay? So that means only itself times one are the only factors that it has. Such as two, which is one times two, because nothing else can multiply together to give you two. Five, one times five, because nothing else times anything will give you five. Any whole number times five. Remember, here's that dot number again. So remember, the dot between a number means to multiply. All right? And so the other one is composite numbers. So composite numbers are values that can be factored into two or more values other than one in itself. So every composite number has one in itself, of course, and then another has another number as well, has another number that will work as well, such as six. So one times six gives you six, and two times three gives you six. Fourteen, so one times fourteen gives me fourteen, and two times seven gives you fourteen. So thirty, and you see you've got the exa examples here. So there's a whole lot more composite numbers as well as prime numbers. These are just a few examples for you. Go ahead when you copy down these words, maybe think of some new ones that we can share, bring in tomorrow that we can share and look at prime and composite numbers. Probably should, you should at least the 1 through 20, we should have the prime, prime numbers that are up to 20, or I guess that would be up to 19. You should probably have those memorized. That'll make when we get into um, simplifying fractions a whole lot easier. All right. So don't forget to bring in the definitions and a couple of examples, remember, of your own, so that we can talk about. So bring those in tomorrow. We're going to glue those definitions down into our spiral with all of our other math vocabulary that we've got going on. All right. Don't forget to bring them in tomorrow. Thanks for watching. See you all tomorrow.